Welcome to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. This Specialty Pharmacy Podcast is a collaboration with the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy, the NASP, and the Pharmacy Podcast Network. The mission of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacy is to improve specialty pharmacy practice by promoting continuing professional education and certification of specialty pharmacists while advocating for public policies that ensure patient access to specialty medications. As the healthcare industry's leading podcast dedicated to the pharmacy profession, the Pharmacy Podcast Network is proud to bring our listeners the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast in partnership with the NASP. Hey, we are here at the NASP 2017 in Washington, D.C., the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies Annual Conference, and we have a brand new sponsor of the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast on. Christopher Kennedy with Heritage Biologics. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm great. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for the introduction. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. Why in the world do you spend the time and money to come to the NASP annual meeting? (laughs) I think one big word would be collaboration. Um, We felt this last year as well at our first meeting was was really getting together and, and learning. I think there's a lot of best practices that are out there, but oftentimes, sometimes I feel like maybe the noise is even too loud. Uh, and I think here at NASP, um, especially in the agenda this year, there's some, some very nice topics that align with what we're looking to improve upon and then to share, right? So part of collaboration isn't just the learning side, it's also sharing what you're doing. And I, I think the leadership has done a nice job at NASP over time, and, and I look forward to Mike continuing that of really bringing out a lot of the best practices from organizations and sometimes you don't know that you have a best practice right so, uh, yep. that would be the kind of the temperature of, of what i think nasp is about so for the listeners sake give it just a slight background we're going to do by the way we're going to do some series in partnership with heritage biologics but just give us a stage setter who is heritage biologics and what's your specialty Sure. So we are, we're highly specialized, uh, really focused in the hemophilia and uh, primary immune deficiency space around IVIG immune globulin. Um, but what we are as a, as a core is a value-based specialty pharmacy. We've partnered with Harvard Business School and specifically Dr. Max Shaw, who works with Michael Porter and Robert Kaplan uh, at Harvard around the value-based initiatives. And our, our niche in the marketplace has really been driving patient-reported outcome measures and quality life metrics in a new way. Uh, around you know high performance outcomes uh, and so I, I like to tell people that Heritage Biologics is really an outcomes focused company and I think the technologies that we are getting to review even here at NASP over this conference uh, really highlight the way that specialty pharmacies can join in towards being a part of an outcome and tying ourselves to some of the risk-based contracts, uh, contracts etc. as an exciting place for specialty pharmacy to continue to evolve outside of just distributing products. Um, but that's that's who we are. We've been we've been uh, tasked, if you will, with leading the patient experience initiative, pharmacy patient experience initiative, that we uh, call RXPX. And uh, my colleague is out here, Amanda Walker. She's uh, one of the first certified patient experience professionals out of the Barrel Institute. She's leading an initiative, and we're looking forward to collaborating with other pharmacies that want to be a part and learn about our program and help us really create a new standard in the market. Um, and I'm excited. I had a, a nice conversation with Mike Agostino, and, and he's open and w- willing to uh, work with us on this process moving forward at NASP. So we look forward to uh, expanding heritage and RXPX throughout the upcoming year here. What I see in the sectors of pharmacy, and what if we say these silos that we're in, the institutional space, the community space, compounding, specialty, it's the specialty sector, in my opinion, that has dropped the silos between pharma and physicians and uh, practicing clinical pharmacists and it's pushing the envelope for other collaborations. So that's what's been most exciting to me. I've only been in pharmacy since 2004. So um, seeing that specialty pharmacy is really leading the way in delivering the collaborations is very important. And I think it's going to lead to other collaborative efforts as well. Yeah, so, you know, that was probably the first question that we sought out to answer when I joined Heritage two years ago. And it was really looking at what, what's the value proposition look, look like back to the provider, so the clinician who's prescribing the medication. And we found a gap there. We found an area of improvement uh, where a lot of times the physician doesn't necessarily know 
the status of their patient population once they get discharged to a specialty pharmacy. So we focused in um, as an organization on how could we uh, answer that opportunity uh, with a product we call Rare Care, and it's a platform that provides real-time analytics back to the doctor. Uh, now, again, this isn't something that you're, quote, reimbursed to do, right? So right. this is a, a nice to do, and for us, it was more than that. It was a need to do. Uh, it was shocking sometimes to understand how often a physician assumes that a specialty pharmacy might be in better contact with the patient, for example, or vice versa. Sometimes the physician's office has had a hard time managing the patient effectively, and pharmacy can actually uh, ad lib that and help become better and almost an extension of the doctor's office. And I think, like you said, um, there's a, a huge opportunity. There's some technologies we've seen here at NASP, some newer ones that will help, I think, as well as organizations start to build their strategic um, structure ar around these initiatives. Chris, we're looking forward to you being part of the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast universe and bringing some really um, interesting thought leaders uh, conversations between physicians and pharmacists, and we really appreciate your sponsorship. No, I appreciate it. Look forward to uh, to, to launching a few different uh, topics that I think will be of interest. I think the, the one of the first that we're going to highlight is a, a meeting with uh, Tom Emmerich, who is the former former head of Walmart Global Benefits. I think it'll be very interesting to listeners to learn what it's like from large employer groups who are looking for solutions direct. So I think that's where, probably where we'll kick off here in the coming weeks. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Cheers. Hey, welcome to the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies 2017 in Washington, D.C. This is the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. My name is Todd Yuri, founder of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. And one of our uh, first guests back in episode 34-ish or something like that, which was embarrassing back when quality certainly wasn't, isn't what it is today was Michelle Sherman. Welcome back to the Pharmacy Podcast, or I should say the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. How are you, Michelle? I'm doing great, Todd. It's great to be back on your show after so many episodes. Hey, I tell you what, um, things have really been moving, and I'm excited that you're back. I have a book in my hand right now that says Saving Lives, The Role of the Pharmacist in HIV. I've known you as a I've known you as a champion in specialty pharmacy for quite some time, the go-to pharmacist when it comes to HIV. Tell us a little bit about this book, Michelle. So this is the second edition of the book. I wrote the first edition back in 2012, and um, with everything that's been changing in HIV and with legislation and healthcare, it was time to update the book. So going through each chapter, it really exhibits what a pharmacist who's seeing HIV patients really needs to know. It goes through each of the five chapters, telling them how to take care of patients, HIV sensitivity issues, just going through what a, an HIV pharmacist or a pharmacist doing HIV would need to do. And it's also a book for HIV patients as well to know what they can expect from the HIV pharmacy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the show notes a link to be able to get a copy of the book, and uh, we'll make sure that pharmacists know more about it, especially in specialty pharmacy. Michelle, tell me what you think the greatest challenge is right now in specialty pharmacy and helping patients, especially those patients with HIV. From the pharmacy level, I think the biggest challenge right now are these DIR fees that the PBMs are throwing at the pharmacies right. for no good reason, really. Um, we've just seen, especially in the specialty arena, like with HIV, where the drugs are so expensive, coming down with like 11%, 9%, and just taking these fees back. Um, I had one uh, pharmacy that got $120,000 taken back in one, one check, just out of the blue. When, as an HIV pharmacist, the amount of care and work and effort that it goes into to taking care of the patient and making sure not only that they get the drugs that the doctors prescribe for them, but also educating them and making sure that they understand how to take the drugs, managing side effects, and dealing with all the issues that go with taking the medication and also how to deal with HIV. 
we should be rewarded for the, for the efforts, right. not penalized. Exactly. So I think the DIR fees are one of the biggest bugaboos right now that pharmacists in specialty and just regular pharmacy are facing. If I'm a pharmacist listening to the show, maybe even a consultant pharmacist listening to the show, What's the best way to reach out to you to understand what you're doing in specialty pharmacy specific to HIV patients and helping those uh, pharmacists out there that want to do more for those patients? You can contact me through my website, MichelleRxConsulting.com, as well as through HIVthrive.com, my patient website. Those are the best ways to get um, in touch with me. My email is also mich at MichelleRxConsulting.com. So any of you out there listening, if you're going through a lot of these challenges or just even average patient care challenges, um, reach out to me and we can figure out you know, how we can solve those issues for you. Very good. And that's MichRx.com. Um, MishRxConsulting.com MishRxConsulting.com The link will be in the show notes so you won't have to uh, look around but if you're listening, you're in the car and you want to Google HIV Thrive that'll actually come right up, right? Yeah, it comes right up. Michelle, we're going to be doing another show with you um, outside the conference because it's definitely noisy here and we're going to um, learn more about what you're doing today especially for those patients looking for solutions for patients that are suffering with HIV. So I appreciate you being here. Great. Thanks so much, Todd. Thank you. Hey, we're here at the NASP annual meeting in Washington, D.C., and I'm here with Kyle Truitt. Welcome to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, Kyle. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate you having me. Is this the first podcast you've been on? It is my first one, yes, sir. <laughs> this is the best one to be on, so there you go. <laughs> hey, let's talk about specialty pharmacy. It's the reason that we're here. The, the common word that I'm hearing is collaboration and networking, technology. But just to set the stage from your perspective, tell us why is it important to be part of the NASP? Yeah, I appreciate the question, and, and you know, before I say, uh, start, uh, what, what a great show. I mean, what an incredible uh, venue. We've had great weather. Uh, uh, the attendance is great, so it's been a uh, just a terrific show. And, you know, it's an interesting question, too, from the perspective of uh, what we're here to uh, uh, kind of make an announcement while we're here, and it's so highly related to your question in terms of uh, networking and collaboration and things of those uh, 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 along those lines. And so just, uh, you know, it's just really important that specialty pharmacies have the ability to do that in a, in a growing competitive uh, environment. And so that's what uh, really makes this really valuable for us. So tell us a little bit about your background and the organization that you're part of and the leadership that you provide, just so that our listeners know who, who they're uh, listening to. Yeah, so I've been in the uh, healthcare industry about uh, 30 years. I've spent about the last uh, 14 or so in the specialty pharmacy space. I've done really everything from uh, chief information officer to running the uh, entire pharmacy operations, front end, back end, call centers. I've also been uh, senior vice president of uh, reimbursement. And so really just about every aspect of uh, pharmacy operations I've done in the, uh, in the last several years. Okay. And then the organization with you said was Turning Point? Yeah, so very excited to, uh, to tell the folks about that today. So we have created uh, essentially a, a high-performing network of specialty pharmacies, and we're calling that uh, Turning Point, which kind of signifies a, uh, a different way of, uh, of maybe doing business. And uh, like I said earlier, we're uh, happy to announce that here at the uh, NASP meeting. That's incredible. So tell me about some of the players that are involved in the subject matter expertise that's bringing Brock to the table and then the ultimate goal and mission of the organization. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not quite ready to uh, uh, announce the uh, the members yet today. We've got a, uh, a little bit of more uh, a little bit more work to do there. Okay. But I am excited to tell you that uh, you know it's a it's a group of like-minded specialty pharmacies that just pr uh, excel at providing high quality care, and just really interested in how we kind of uh, uh, come together to leverage uh, purchasing how we come together to leverage uh, high quality clinical programs, and how we also come together to uh, appeal to payers as a, uh, a, a single easy solution for them to come to, to get access to a vast network of uh, specialty pharmacies and uh, really high quality patient care. I think this also helps to define 
that mysterious question of what is specialty pharmacy because you're going to have this quality adherence that's going to be the same or like by these like-minded individuals leading these specialty pharmacies within that specific disease state so i think this is good for the industry yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I think that, uh, uh, first of all, I, like I say, with the, the, the type of folks that we're assembling in this uh, membership are really uh, best in class. So they provide the highest level of uh, quality care, and it's the single most important thing for, uh, for all of them. So I think it really is important for the industry. And I think that they all have a, uh, collectively, we uh, cover effectively all of the uh, specialty therapies and have access to almost all of the limited distribution drugs. And so it really is just a, uh, a high quality, really uh, broad reaching uh, uh, network. That sounds very exciting. I want a turning point when you get to the point that you're ready, um, not to double up on the word point, but when you get to that point, I want to bring you back on the show so that we can expand upon some of the mission and the vision so that we can share this with our, um, our pharmacy uh, specialists and, of course, the specialty pharmacy champions that are out there. Yeah, I would sure love to do that and take the opportunity to do that. Again, uh, appreciate you having me today. But I think as we kind of flesh out some of the details, you know, I'd be really interested in uh, spending a little more time talking about what the appeal is for the uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers, what the appeal is going to be for the uh, payers, and why I think this is such a, uh, an incredible opportunity for the industry. So really would love to do that. Excellent, Kyle. Thank you so much for being part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, specialty pharmacy podcast, part of the NASP and being here at the NASP uh, annual meeting. Hey, Todd, thanks again. Really enjoyed it. Hey, we are here with the co-host of the first launch of this Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, Harry Travis. Welcome back to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. How are you, Harry? Todd, it's great to be back, and I am fine. So um, let's set the stage for the listeners who might not have heard the opening show um, quite a while back. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're tied into the Specialty Pharmacy sector of pharmacy. Okay trained as a pharmacist at the University of Pittsburgh School of Pharmacy. Go Pittsburgh. There you go. And uh, then uh, practiced a little in community pharmacy in Washington, D.C. for people's drugstores, which was eventually rolled up into CVS. Went back to school, got an MBA at the University of Virginia, and then my career really tracked through corporate America on that side with uh, long stints at Baxter, working on Baxter's drug delivery systems. So any hospital pharmacists out there are dealing with frozen mini bags and premixed Vioflex containers. That was the team that I was on at Baxter. And then spent a, a good stint at Cardinal, running their oncology distribution business, which Great. got my first kind of peek at the beginnings of specialty pharmacy as specialty distribution was starting to emerge. And then at Acredo, was the chief operating officer for Credo Nova Factor, one of the very first of the about four key specialty pharmacies that started up. It was Priority, Curascript, Statlanders, Credo, okay. which we were one of those. And then most recently, um, seven years at, at Aetna, running Aetna Specialty Pharmacy here in Orlando. So I've had the good fortune to live in the two kind of <laughs> hubs of specialty pharmacy in the U.S. You've right. got Pittsburgh and you, you've got Orlando. Right. Uh, and now I'm uh, CEO of a small emerging uh, digital health company called eTech RX, and we're developing a digital ingestible sensor for medication adherence. But we'll talk more about that at yes, another time. Yes, I want a whole episode on that, so okay. we'll have to talk about that. But that sounds extremely exciting. I know how it's going to be talking to uh, an iPhone and talking to other pharmacy systems via uh, the Internet of Things. So I'm excited about that. One of the many digital products coming out for medication adherence. That's right. So let's talk about the NASP and the importance of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies. You've seen this from its birth. So someone who really has a background in specialty pharmacy, I think it's uh, relevant. So just give us an overview of the importance and why, if I'm listening to the show and I might not be part of this organization and I am in specialty pharmacy or I'm a community pharmacy wanting to get into specialty pharmacy, why do I align myself with the NASP? I think NASP has done a great job of balancing or meeting the needs of the practicing pharmacist and the pharmacy owner. 
the independent specialty pharmacy owner as well as the, the practicing pharmacist who could be in a, a specialty pharmacy or they could be in a regional chain or they could be in a large chain and they just want to know more about how do I deal with these drugs and, and these patients. Okay. So the curriculum here, the program here, seems to balance nicely between kind of business issues, particularly large scale kind of political issues, reimbursement issues, licensing issues, network contracting issues. But at then at the same time, there's a lot of good sessions on patient management issues, patient care issues, therapy management issues. So I've bumped into a lot of both owners and pharmacists who seem to be real busy running between all of the sessions with smiles on their faces. Right. So it, what's been one of the most outstanding sessions that you've attended so far here? The one that I just came out of I thought was great, which was Senator Bill Nelson, Republican from Louisiana, gave a really nice talk on kind of the state of health care legislation, the frustration of trying to get something done. But with the, he had a real can-do attitude. The guy is a, uh, a, a physician. Uh, he joked about the fact that you know this was one of the few rooms that he ever spoke to, the few audiences he ever spoke to where when he said he was a hepatologist, they didn't think that he treated snakes, okay? <laughs> and uh, he had a good Q&A session, and it was, uh, it, was a, it was encouraging to see the amount of enthusiasm and commitment that he had and the obvious depth of knowledge he had. So it was impressive that they were able to get a sitting U.S. senator to come and speak to the group. Even in D.C., that's not easy. That's uh, great. You know, Buddy Carter is one of our legislators now, and he has a finger on the pulse of the business of pharmacy as a business owner himself, mm -hmm. pharmacy owner himself. But having a United States senator that's a physician, I think there's lots of value there because they see things from a perspective that senators that might come from a just strictly business background right. just don't understand. Right. And the nuances of getting paid and collaboration and health uh, which, which is called Healthcare 2.0 or 2.0 um, versus what's coming, which is this new collaborative look at what is Healthcare uh, 3.0. So. I have not paid much attention to Buddy Carter until I heard about him indirectly at this meeting. There were a lot of props given out to him, so i got to look up his yes. background and see what he's doing. we got to get him back on the Pharmacy Podcast. Yeah. We had him on when he was a candidate. Oh, he uh, did? So we have to no get kidding. Him how to get him on when, now that he's uh, in power. So. That's good. So what is in the future for, uh, for NASP, do you see? What else needs to happen to this organization to really continue to drive excellence within the specialty pharmacy industry? Like any organization uh, that's an association of professionals, commitment by the members is okay. critical. I agree. And particularly kind of operationalizing that commitment or showing that commitment through legislative efforts. Okay. So much rests on reimbursement, transparency of reimbursement programs, network management, thing, things like that. So, And pharmacists, by their nature, and the business, are very community-based. We know that. So there was a call to action today to you know hold legislative events in your pharmacies, get your congressman into the pharmacy, teach them what a DIR fee is, right. teach them what a PBM is, teach them what a specialty drug is and, and what's going on. So that's for NASP to be successful, the commitment of the members to that activity I think is critical and we'll see action on the Hill. I agree. Harry, we're excited that you're coming back to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast and um, we look forward to the content that you'll be bringing to the network. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Thank you, Harry. Hey, thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network's coverage of the NASP 2017 in Washington, D.C. I'm excited to welcome Ellie Khalifi to the show, which is a very special. I've worked with him for years in pharmacy technology and software, and he and the Keycentrics team is a sponsor of this specialty pharmacy podcast. Ellie, welcome to the show. How are you? Well, how are you, Todd? Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. I really enjoyed working with you for the past um, eight years, and I'm very excited to be here at the specialty at the NASP, the um, basically the association that 
govern specialty pharmacy and where the market is going in general. Yes, and so Keycentrix is a very interesting company, uh, starting in the community pharmacy space, starting to build out institutional pharmacy programs, the combo shop, having a pharmacy be able to do management of senior care and community. And now, I think it was like five or six years ago, you guys came in as a amazing provider of uh, specialty pharmacy technology. Just give our listeners who might not know a little bit about Keycentric some background, and then I have some questions about the NASP for you. Sure, sure. So Keycentric was founded in 1973. We've always serviced the specialty pharmacy market in general, every segment of pharmacy, starting with retail. And uh, in 2009, actually, we, we were um, fortunate to, to be approached by a company, uh, a pharmacy that used our retail, retail services to start specialty, which put us on the map. And we started developing with them alongside with some of the largest specialty pharmacies today in the market the offering that we we have today, New Leaf Rx. And New Leaf Rx saw the light in 2012. We've been enrolling um, specialty pharmacies left and right. We're we're actually one of the founders of NASP and we are proud of that. We are seeing this association growing day after day with bigger memberships, larger shows, and more pharmacies getting more and more involved in in this market. So retail, the next phase of retail is actually looking at what NESP is doing, helping in specialty, and moving forward to the dark side. <laughs> but what's really interesting, Ellie, is you've positioned yourself without doing it on, on purpose. You kind of did it accidentally. You were this provider of community pharmacy technology, and you paid attention to the demands of your customer, and you end up building a platform for specialty pharmacy. But those pharmacies who have grown out of community into specialty can fit nicely right into the New Leaf product. Absolutely. So New Leaf can service every segment of pharmacy. It can service pharmacies that are in retail and moving into specialty. So in, in a hybrid environment, you, they, can, they can have just New Leaf as their main system and we can config, configure the application to service every segment, even to service every disease state and specialty pharmacy it's the best of both we're actually it's the best of three worlds because you have institutional community and specialty so that makes a lot of sense also compounding there's a compounding segment to the program as well yes that's that's true with every you know with with this segment with the specialty pharmacy segment compounding plays a big big role with biologics and um, infusion and we do service those those uh, segments too so let's talk about the NASP what do you think is important of being at this conference, this annual conference, as well as being part of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies? As I mentioned earlier, um, I'm one of the founders of NESP with, um, with Gary Cohen, uh, Jim Smeeding, uh, Michael Namath, um, Phil Hagerman. So all the people that, <coughs> that founded this association are still part and involved either in specialty pharmacy as a, as practitioners or as board members of NASP. How NASP grew, um, it grew from just an idea and gathering people in the industry to really the, the foundation of specialty pharmacy, the training, the lobbying, the uh, certification, um, and you know, having everybody engaged from the manufacturer to the um, certification boards um, to the specialty pharmacy themselves is extremely important. It's no longer um, just servicing one market, it's helping everybody, each others, into servicing the patient and this is what's important. This is what specialty pharmacy is. Everybody's looking for outcome and the outcome is servicing the patient. It's not only to make money. And as you have heard, I mean, with the DIR fees and other fees that are being uh, imposed on specialty pharmacies, some would think that specialty is not is no longer the way to go because they are not making as much money. It's again, it's not about the money; it's about the patient, about the care and the outcome. And to I think that what NASP is doing today in terms of putting together the guidelines of 
specialty pharmacy, they are actually putting the guidelines for all pharmacy as a whole. Right. So whatever we are learning from specialty pharmacy, will have to apply into retail pharmacy, so that they can, that the retail pharmacies will abide by those guidelines. I've noticed that specialty pharmacy was practicing what is known as value-based care before that term was even being used in healthcare. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's interesting. I mean, I was a I witnessed with your team with Jeremy Hume, who I just want to give a shout out to Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Um, we went to Amber's Pharmacy. We stood in their call center. We're, we're being compassionate. And it was the first time in, in my life that I realized pharmacy is so much bigger. So I think someday we won't even say specialty pharmacy. We'll just say pharmacy because it's what a pharmacy is evolving into. That's right. It's value-based pharmacy and you know outcome-based uh, healthcare. And very soon we're going to see new words coming into the payer side and the insurance side where they will incentivize the pharmacy and incentivize the prescriber to do their job correctly and they will incentivize the patient to be compliant with their with their drugs so for the listeners we have an entire series that's going to be built around the key centric universe we're going to be talking about specialty pharmacy institutional community we're going to get a little bit deeper into the weeds but Ellie, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being a sponsor of the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast and your dedication to this market, as well as just the, the market of pharmacy overall. But thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. Hey, we're at the NASP 2017 in Washington, D.C., and I'm here with an old friend, Mr. Tom Cohn. How are you today? Good. How are you, Todd? Very good. So welcome to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. I want to start off, if listeners don't know, you've been in the industry for quite some time. Give a little background on your organization and yourself. Well, my company is uh, Assembia. We started off as Armada Healthcare, and, um, and my role in the company is Chief Strategy Officer. Um, and really, our role in the specialty pharmacy industry is working with our specialty pharmacy partners along with pharmaceutical manufacturers working on programs that help decrease the time to fill, increase the fill rate, and really help enhance patient outcomes. Um, so really we're just an organization that is a network of specialty pharmacies and we work advocating on their behalf with manufacturers and other industry partners to really show the value of specialty pharmacy. So you're really, a, you're an infrastructure provider that allows a specialty pharmacy to uh, purchase the, the meds through the uh, manufacturer, uh, develop new technologies, um, develop these um, hub centers to care for the best practices for the patient. It's really this entire infrastructure universe of specialty pharmacy. Absolutely. When we started out, um, a lot of it was about purchasing volume and um, discounts. We started off as a group purchasing organization called Armada Healthcare, but um, through the evolution of the specialty industry and the needs of our pharma partners, we realized that um, you know to get to the next level, we really needed to, um, be, to provide much more value to them in direct patient care and really get the pharmacies paid more for the services that they're providing. So things evolved into, um, you know, subsidizing, you know, intervention programs, um, being programs to help get patients through financial assistance or foundation assistance, um, which led to the evolution of us functioning more as a hub and helping manufacturers with the launch of new products into markets, whereas discount type programs sometimes end, happen at the end of a product's life cycle. But now it's about, you know, how can we help pharmacies get access to limited distribution products? How can we help a manufacturer um, that has products that might have trouble at launch get past those hurdles? So even through this all, we've seen the marketplace evolving where there's more even quasi-retail products that have a lot of specialty attributes that we're able to help with. So 
even the definition has broadened as we look at new products that are launching. So we've evolved and changed our name. Um, and really, you know, the word assembia comes from the process of assembling um, pharmacies and programs and functioning as the intermediary clearing house that makes all these things happen, measurable, and managed. So you sit on the board of the NASP. Tell me why you believe it's important to have an organization uh, like NASP. And if I'm listening to the show and I'm not already a member and I'm in specialty pharmacy or even I'm thinking about getting into specialty pharmacy, what's the value of this organization? Well, I think really, you know, prior prior to... Um, NASP being an industry organization around specialty pharmacy, you know, our, our company, you know, had some initiatives, but I think this is really a, a way where we can get everybody together from the advocacy side, really demonstrating the value that pharmacy brings. The name of the organization is not the National Association of Specialty Pharmaceuticals. It's not about the product. What it's really about is the practice of pharmacy. So elevating and creating recognition for this, uh, the practice of specialty pharmacy um, with the end goal of in- improving outcomes for the patient, always with the patient in mind. Um, I think that's the role that NASP has come to play. Um, having this meeting here today in Washington, D.C., I think is important symbolically as we're able to... Um, let other people know the great work that all these pharmacies and the value um, that these products have um, for the patients who are receiving them when used appropriately. Excellent. So um, you have a industry conference coming up in February. It will be, what number are you guys on with the Assembia show? Um, you know, I, I think we're up to um, number 13, 13, I believe. It's actually the Lucky first 13. week of May. Um, yeah, and, you know, that that's also shown how the industry has grown. You know, we've, right. we've started off with, um, you know, a, a meeting of 30 people interested in specialty oh, pharmacy. And now, you know, five to 6,000 people are showing up, and it's changed. You know, first it was the pharmacies, then it was pharma and wholesalers and other partners. But now we're getting the media, um, Wall Street's there, everyone's there, everyone wants to learn more about what's going on in specialty pharmacy. I've always said that it's specialty pharmacy that is taking down those silos between physician and pharmacist and pharmacist and pharma and pharmacist and payer. And specialty pharmacy is that uh, position within what is healthcare in, in pharmacy specifically to lower those um, those those fictitious barriers because I think specialty kind of brings it all together and that hand-holding together between the pharma manufacturer, the payer, the physician, and the the, the, um, the pharmacist that's happening every day in specialty pharmacy. So I like seeing that because it's going to help every facet of, of pharmacy. Yes, it's some, for some types of patients and some therapies, you know, the pharmacy is the one having the most contact with the patient, in which case they become the case manager for the patient. They might have multiple physicians, multiple disease states. They could be in the position where they're dealing with all of it and having the most contact with the patient between office visits. So they're an an important role for that patient in helping them get through not just the disease they're dealing with, but the psychological issues involved with it. And they're providing that level of support. And I think that's what really creates the true relationship um, between that pharmacy and the patient long term. And, you know, um, the pharmacies know they've been doing this. If any patients have been through it, they know what's going on. But how do we get the word out to the rest of the world? Right. Well, we're going to podcast all about it. (laughs) Thanks so much, Tom. All right. Thank you. All right. Hey, we are here at the NASP 2017 in Washington, D.C. I have a special guest, a first-time podcaster, Kevin McNamara. How are you today? Great, thank you. So tell me about yourself. What is um, your role with the NASP and something very special that we want to talk about, which is the CSP prep course? So just give us an overview of yourself and, um, and what you do. Okay. Um, I am a clinical pharmacist. I've been a pharmacist for a long time. 
Um, I am actually a consultant, so I work with different pharmacies on different projects, whatever they need. Um, but my role with NASP is on, on the Education Committee, and as a subcommittee of the Education Committee, we created a Certified Specialty Pharmacist Exam Prep Course um, so that we can really help pharmacists be feel more prepared when they go to take the Certified Specialty Pharmacist exam, which is becoming more and more prevalent and which is being actually required by some of the PBMs that there be a CSP at the pharmacy. So Kevin, I think this is helping to define even more so what is specialty pharmacy by having a course that verifies a certified specialty pharmacist. So it makes absolute sense that this is coming to be. Describe the course to us a little bit. Um, the, the course content is based on what the Specialty Pharmacy Certification Board has come up with, um, and it combines clinical knowledge base on, uh, knowledge on the primary disease states that um, we see in specialty pharmacy, the ones that have basically the most patients and the most dollars. So the um, clinical modules were devoted to multiple sclerosis, um, inflammatory disorders, hepatitis C, and um, in, on oral oncology or oncology in general. And then we did one additional module on kind of other disease states that we see a lot in specialty pharmacy, and that was made up of HIV, um, immune globulin, and hemophilia patients. And then, besides the clinical environment, we there's um, a section on fulfillment, there's a section on intake, um, and a general clinical um, section which is all of the stuff that you need to know that's maybe not clinically based, but the stuff that you need to know to effectively care for your patient. Very good. So if I'm listening to the show, I didn't get to come to the NASP 2017, but I want to take this course, where's the best place to get access to it, or at least register for it? Um, the, the course content is available through the ProCE website. Um, you can just go onto their website, set up an account, and um, register for or, or buy the modules, if you will. I, it's I think uh, I, I I don't know what the price of it is, but it's it's relatively inexpensive, and it's a total of six. 0.75, I believe, total hours. If you do all the modules, you can choose to do as many or as few of those if you want, as you want from um, doing it as an on-demand type thing. Okay. So, um, could we get a link um, from the NASP's website? Do they have a link that leads back to it? Okay. We'll, we'll vet that out and find it, but... <laughs> I wanted to thank you, Kevin, for making this um, part of the post show for the NASP. This is very important. If you're listening once again to the show, you want more information, we're going to have it in the show notes as well as the NASP's website. And um, thanks for being part of the show. Thank you. On behalf of the National Association of Specialty Pharmacies and the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast, We thank those participants, vendors, associates, and industry stakeholders for coming to the 2017 annual meeting. Please join us next year in the same place in Washington, D.C. on September 16th through 19th, 2018 for the NASP annual meeting. And we thank you for listening to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast's coverage of NASP 2017. Thanks for listening to the Specialty Pharmacy Podcast. Be sure to share this podcast with your fellow pharmacists, doctors, and healthcare providers dedicated to optimal patient care. If you have ideas for future episode topics, please email the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Send your message to publisher at pharmacypodcast.com.